Marine Mammals of Maine is a nonprofit that responds to marine mammal strandings from Kittery to Rockland, Maine. We respond to a variety of marine mammals. We have seals, whales, dolphins, porpoises, and we also have sea turtles that we respond to as well. Primarily, our organization takes reports in to animals reported into our hotline, mostly from the public. We also have a rehab center um, where we can bring animals in. It's a combination of a triage and long-term care. The point of those cases is to release them back into the wild. There's been various groups that have been designated to respond to marine mammals within the state of Maine. It's really dramatically changed over time. There was a mixture of nonprofit and governmental and state agencies that have been involved with responding to marine mammal strandings in Maine. And we ended up having it go through multiple organizations. In 2011, Maine Department of Marine Resources could no longer support a marine mammal response group. And so we know that this work was needed to continue. The public really is the one that has supported that because there were so many calls that come into the hotline not being able to have someone on the other end to answer that phone call about what they're seeing or what is happening, um, I feel is really needed. Myself and some volunteers got together to create an organization. We didn't know what that was going to be. We knew that we wanted to continue to provide support to marine mammals and we have to actually get a permit through National Marine Fisheries Service to do that work. So with some passion and some experience behind us, we were able to successfully support uh, reorganizing our nonprofit and then continuing on to add marine mammal permit from NOAA Fisheries to continue responding to marine mammals. So we started out with 2011, reorganizing our nonprofit, becoming marine mammals of Maine. 2012, we were able to get our permit to respond to marine mammal strandings. And then we um, also relied on the University of New England to provide support for rehabilitation because we were still just doing response at that time. So we were just getting our flow down and things were happening. And then in 2014, the University of New England decides to close their Marine Animal Rehab Center in Biddeford, Maine. And that was right before Memorial Day weekend. And that is really our busiest time of the year. That's what we prepare for year round for that particular weekend kind of kicks off um, tourist season in the state of Maine. And that's when dependent harbor seal pups are born. In a surprise announcement last Friday, UNE said Mark is closing. We had a press release that was sent out on Friday morning about the closure and that really devastated us. If there's not an organization or a place to take them to or respond to, these animals will either pass on their own or we might have to humanely euthanize the animal. We ended up having to put down a lot of animals that year because there was no place for them to go. That wasn't a good feeling that summer and that still drives me today to be able to support providing care for these animals. <laughs> We worked on making plans along with our board and the support of other uh, organizations that rely on rehab capacity in the Northeast to bring rehab back to Maine. It wasn't easy because we also had the doors closed on us. There was people that thought that this couldn't happen or this couldn't work, that, you know, Linda, good luck. Not that that drove me to make those things happen, but it... <laughs> You have to have an open mind going into this and how to think outside the box and not work with a lot of money to make something like this happen. Again, marine mammal permitting depends on working through NOAA Fisheries because they're the ones that uphold the Marine Mammal Protection Act. And through them, 
not only do we have response to marine mammals that we need a permit for, but taking on caring for animals requires another additional permitting process. So we had to show our experience, you know, we have to have a vet that has marine mammal experience as well. Between that and trying to find funds and working with a limited amount of resources, we were able to open our first triage center of its kind in 2016. So that was a really <laughs> glorious moment because it would be the first time that rehab, small sense of rehab could be brought back to Maine and being able to triage animals prior to transporting them to other permitted rehab facilities out of state helps stabilize those animals so that it increases their survival rate. I mean, we were doing it for the animals, but to see how the community involvement into seeing something like this be created and the people who, we had a little pup shower that year and people were donating supplies, things that we needed to help care for these animals, which it was exciting to see, not only we knew that we cared, but how the community cared as well. In one year's time, we were going for rehab. So from 2016 to 2017, we increased our capacity to respond and provide from start to finish, meaning rescue to release, long-term care of two rehab patients. So here we are 10 years later, not even knowing if we were gonna have money to even exist, we were all volunteer, to now having two full-time staff, two part-time staff, a full rehab center that is increasing capacity with each year. We can provide up to eight long-term care patients at our center to having a thriving research program and a very popular outreach and education program. There has not been one year where we haven't done just normal operating for the year. Every year it's always been increasing our capacity, and I won't say even just animal-wise, but our functions and programs for our organization. In 10 years, we've gone from just doing marine mammal response to a now including a four-prong program. We have response, long-term rehabilitation, outreach slash education, and also research. Really looking ahead of where we think marine mammals in Maine should really be going and what that looks like as we keep building our capacity over time is really being able to still respond to marine mammal strandings, but also having those cases that we don't have to say no to anymore. Being able to provide care for all the animals that need it without leaving the state of Maine. So the beach that I'm currently standing on is my grandparents' beach and they've since passed and they were really, they're really instrumental in me having that dream to start out when you're a little kid, which sounds a little cliche. And I never thought I'd be doing what I wanted to do. Um, and then through the years, having the support system of my family and my mother and my father and my sister and my brother has really been able to develop into having a strong organization like the Mammals of Maine. When I was younger, we had a seal pup show up on my grandparents' beach and I did all the wrong things. <laughs> and I stayed close to the animal, it was very stressful, all these things that I didn't realize that were actually being harmful. I have learned so much in the 20 plus years since then of how to help these animals and this beach area and where the story of marine mammals in Maine really began. I never thought it would develop into what it is today, but it's a passion that I have never let go of. It's always been with me to be able to provide care for the animals that don't have a voice of their own.